Your rally factor is on tonight. Well, they're 100 miles from Baghdad. And what's the president doing? Taking a nap. Republicans angry that Iraq is falling apart, and it does look like the Obama administration was caught by surprise once again. We'll have no spin analysis. I'm just trying to clarify so I can understand. No, I don't think you are trying to clarify. I think you're trying to say that, you know, I used to be uh, opposed, and now I'm in favor, and I did it for political reasons. Hillary Clinton getting scrutinized, even by the liberal NPR network. What's that all about? We'll tell you. Also tonight, shake it up, baby. Governor Christie trying to win back hearts and minds of the voters. Hypothetically, Hillary Clinton runs for president. Do you think you could beat her? You bet. In a dance-off. <laughs> Caution. You are about to enter the no-spin zone. Factor begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Doing nothing. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Back in the 19th century, there was an American political group known as the Know Nothings because they were secretive and pretty much ineffective. Today, we have a do nothing government in Washington. Our elected officials generally sit around saying, oh, they'll get to the bottom of it. They'll get to the bottom of everything, claiming they're working around the clock but little is actually accomplished. Let me back it up. When Putin invaded Crimea, America was caught by surprise. When terrorists killed four Americans in Benghazi, Libya, America was caught by surprise. When the VA scandal broke in Phoenix, Arizona, the administration was caught by surprise. When thousands of children started illegally walking across the southern border, there was surprise in Washington. And now, with Iraq on the verge of collapse, guess what? They're surprised. But the president says they're working hard on the problem. My team is working uh, around the clock to identify how we can uh, provide uh, the most effective assistance to them. Uh, I don't rule out anything. But critics of the president say he has known for months that Iraq was in danger. It's not like we haven't seen this problem coming for over a year. And it hasn't, it, it's not like we haven't seen over the last five or six months, uh, these terrorists moving in, taking control of western Iraq. Uh, now they've taken control of Mosul. They're 100 miles from Baghdad. And what's the president doing? Taking a nap. Even though that's a partisan statement, President Obama does appear disengaged from vital problems all over the world. And it looks like American voters are starting to understand that. New Gallup poll asked, does President Obama manage government effectively? 39% say yes, 60% say no. Then this question, does President Obama have a clear plan for solving the country's problems? 34% say yes, a whopping 65% no. Let me put that number into perspective for you. 34% of Americans will approve of whatever Barack Obama does. It doesn't matter to them. They just like him and that's that. So the president is virtually getting a no-confidence vote from every other person in the country. That's amazing. Now, Talking Points has been very consistent over the past 18 years. I don't care about party politics. I want problem solvers in Washington and in our state capitals. I want honest people who will think about creative solutions to vexing situations. I have nothing personally against Barack Obama. He's helped us raise a lot of money for wounded warriors. He's been respectful to us generally. And I support some of his programs like mentoring poor children and raising the minimum wage so more people get off the dole. But there's no question at this point in history that President Obama is not effectively running the country. Senator McCain was right yesterday when he said Obama needs to fire his crew and get some experienced people to advise him on vital issues. Again, 65% of American adults believe the president is not an effective problem solver. And boy, do we have problems. And that's the memo. Now for our top story tonight with us, Fox News Chief White House Correspondent Ed Henry. So am I being too harsh on the president uh, I mean, a little bit. I mean, he's not responsible for every single thing that's gone bad Those are in the big last ones, few months. Though. Yeah, sure, the VA big. scandal, they should have known about sooner. And people died. And that's a big deal. Sure. Iraq, 
you know, yes, um, he probably should have been on top of this sooner. Uh, I'll give you one quick example. From day one of this administration, the president handed the Iraq account to Vice President Biden. So this week, when they were trying to press the Iraqi prime minister to do something finally, who made the call? Not the president of the United States. It was Vice President Biden. Commander Chief's got to get his hands dirty on this okay, kind of but stuff. You so said, that point is fair. You said that I'm being too harsh. Well, All because right. you're painting this picture that everything he's touched is just falling apart. Did I, did I not back it up? <laughs> All right. You Cr like him Crimea. on the minimum wage and that's it. No, no, no. It's not about that. Crimea, <laughs> caught by surprise, correct? Crimea? Yeah, pretty okay. much. All right. VA scandal caught by surprise? Yeah. Okay. VA, VA officials knew All about right. it. He did. Border guy, children coming across? By surprise? Well, they knew this was coming up. It's, it's been building for months. We, we've focused on it this week. But yeah. Was there a public statement made by the president no, about I mean, the children? They haven't, and they haven't done anything about it, really, okay, other than putting right, them in right. detention centers. So where am I being too harsh? Everything uh, I said is true. In terms of some of the bad things that would happen, but it's not like he's sitting in Washington doing nothing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. These are wants... major issues. Okay. These are big, big issues. Sure. I say he hasn't done anything on any of them. You agree, and then you say I'm being too harsh. I agree that he's been disengaged on some of these big things. All and of that them. he could probably do more, but you're painting a picture that he's done absolutely nothing on any what of them. What has he done on any of those issues? I, I raised five of them. Well, on the VA scandal, yes. After the fact, he finally started cleaning house. He probably he's should have done that a bit sooner. Five and a half years. Sure, he should have done it sooner. Up. Right, but this has been building for years and years and years. And he on, didn't do anything. On Iraq, what's he going to do when you've got Prime Minister Maliki, who, you know, has been letting this sectarian violence build and build and build out of control? He's an idiot. He's Maliki's no an idiot. Okay. So what but, does Obama but, do there? Well, what he does is, number one, inform the American people that this is going south. Sure. All right. Number two, he might use air power. That's possible. He doesn't know what to do now. Why doesn't he know? He he should have had a consent. Look, Henry, let me educate you. Okay, let me educate you. This is what a leader does. This is what a leader does. And I'm coming at this from a historical point of view, everyone. This is what a good leader does. Anticipates problems. And then when they happen, has a plan immediately that he can go to. If they don't happen, he doesn't have to go to them. All right? That's what George Washington did. Abraham Lincoln did. FDR did. They anticipate things happening. Sure, but especially the when they're warned. Right. They're warned that it could happen. So... Obama was warned that Iraq could go south. Sure. Where's his plan? Well, we'll probably, he, he's going to be dealing plan? with airstrikes at some point. But yes, could he have done more? Sure. Okay. But nobody has some solution. I mean, we've been talking about this months ago with, with Russia as well. What are you, you going to do with Putin? You're going to go to war with Russia? I told you what you're doing with Putin. All right. All right. I told you. Do you remember? You forget. <laughs> I forgot. Right? I'm going to remind you. You're going to have to educate I'm going to remind you. I'm going to educate you again. All right. It's a young guy, Henry. I mean, don't, t don't take it out on him. All right. What I said is what they should have done. That is it. Visa, MasterCard, and American Express do not accept don't receipts do yeah. from Russia. All right? That cripples them immediately, and that tells Putin, you do it again, that's what's going to happen again. Right. That's a solution to a problem. All right? Iraq, I don't... I, would, I don't know whether I use air power, but I probably would. But I'll tell you what, if I'm sitting in the Oval Office, I have that plan already in effect because sure. I knew this was coming. Right, but the Pentagon does have these plans is part of my point. It's not you're making it like the president has no idea what to do. He has these plans. Uh, my question is more about one of the leadership issue. Is he decisive enough? Is he going to take those plans from Pentagon? It's not like they don't He's know obviously anything about not decisive. Well, on Syria, as soon as you have those an guys, he didn't move forward. As Syria. soon as those guys attack Mosul. All right. You know Mosul, right? Sure. All right. Have you been, you've been to Iraq, right? I have not been to Iraq. All right. I have been to Iraq. Yeah. As soon as those guys came across the Syrian border, right. all right, en masse, you have your planes up. You're bombing the hell out of them before they come into Mosul. And you're saying to the Iraqi army, hey, we'll help you. And that'll bolster the Iraqi army. Did you see the right? Iraqi army running for their yes, lives? Yes, you know why? <laughs> because they know they have no support from anyone, and they're, and they're well, not going to die do from the air power. Then a day later, two days later, what's the Iraqi army going to do? I don't do? know. They're like a ragtag but bunch you, of folks. Is there anything wrong with killing these uh, Al-Qaeda's? Anything at all? No. Well, let's kill them. Wipe them out. Then that's right. Sure. And they're Terrorists coming across the out. desert en masse. Right. You can see them. Our drones know where they are. Sure. So, so send them in from Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, our fighters, and knock them out. Right. What's wrong with that? Sure, that, that's fine. You want to use drones, that's fine. But if you want to talk about more serious U.S. military intervention after we've spent almost a trillion dollars in Nobody's Iraq, putting boots on the ground. Okay. You're killing well, as many of these Al-Qaeda's as you can kill. Right. And you're sending a message to the Iraqi army that you're not alone. All right? That's the plan that should have been there. But it isn't. You know why? Because no plan is there. And no plan is there on any of the issues. That There's I a plan there. He's not, he's not doing it yet. He said give him a few days. All we'll right. see. I know it's your job to... Uh, <laughs> Have a rapport. You tell him. I'm, you tell him. Mm -hmm. If you see him, I'm a little disappointed. More than a little.
Ed Henry, everybody, there he is. Next on the rundown, Lou Dobbs on the awful chaos involving children coming into the USA illegally, and the government, of course, caught by surprise. Then Geraldo on the border mess and the Iraq mess. Lots of messes. Factors coming right back.